Hi and welcome to this video about DLL injection using the API Create Remote Thread. So first let's look at the plan. Injecting the DLL into a different process using Create Remote Thread is a fairly well-known technique but still might be useful to see how it's actually done in practice by writing some code. So here's the plan. We have a target process where we would like to inject some DLL, could, could be any DLL really, and then we have an injector process that would initiate the injection procedure. The first thing to do is to allocate memory in the target process address space and write the path of the DLL into the target address space process. And the reason is that what we're going to do, we're going to use the create remote thread function to run the load library API. And load library needs the path to the DLL. So we'll have to put the path in the target process where the remote thread will run. Then we can create the remote thread in the target process. That thread will be pointing to the load library function. It's going to call load library using the DLL path we've written before, and that would force the DLL to be loaded into the target process. Then the injector process can simply go away, it doesn't need to exist anymore, and the DLL is simply there. So let's see how to do that using code. Okay, here's Visual Studio. Let me open a new project, create a new project. And you can use any version of Visual Studio, like 2022 that I'm using, but any version will do. You can also use the Community Edition, which is free. So anything goes, really. And I'm going to select a Desktop Wizard project because first I would like to create some simple DLL to be used as the DLL for injection purposes. So it could be anything. Let's just call that simple DLL. I'm going to call the solution injection, just to make it uh, nicer, and use create. I'm going to select the DLL here, and I don't really need that much, simply having an MP project is very close to what we need, but let's just export a few symbols, so we get the DLL main function generated by the wizard for us. Let's just do that. So here goes, we get the DLL main function right here, we don't really need to do anything else, but let's just add some simple code here, let me just format that in a, perhaps a nicer manner and then what we want to do is just prove that this DLL in fact is being loaded into some target process and so we have that reason here let's look at that reason do a little bit formatting here so increase the font size and what I want to do is simply use the message box API to display some message box indicating that we are in some process and so to do that let me create some text here and then just uh, do something like uh, wsprintf or something similar uh, to write into this text uh, something such as hello from process percent u and we're going to be getting the current process id just to prove that we're in a different process than the injector process then we can use the text here and say our caption, let's uh, use the caption a simple DLL and just use icon information to have some nice icon and we're done. So let's uh, build that, make sure it uh, compiles. Seems to be okay, let's now create our injector process. So let's go ahead and use another new project. This time we'll select a simple console application just to make it slightly easier and injector will be our name. So what we have here is some dummy code that will just remove all the stuff here. And we'll get going first by including Windows.h to have access to most of the Windows APIs. We can also add SDIO maybe for printf purposes if we need that. Uh, let's just add that and, and that's it. So first what we need is getting the information from the command line as to the process ID to use to inject into and the DLL path to use. So let's use RxC here and use the classic names to get the parameters from the command line. So if we don't have enough parameters, let's just issue an error and provide the usage. So the usage would be an injector with the process ID and the DLL path. This is what we expect to get. And we can get out of this application. So next, we need to get our process ID so let's just do that by using the simple a to i function by grabbing the first parameter on the command line except for the executable which is in argv0 
And the next thing to do is to open a handle to the target process. Without a handle, we won't be able to make any forward progress. So this injection technique obviously doesn't always work. It depends on the process, at the very least, that you're trying to open. So the important part to provide here is the access mask. So we need here a few things. We need process VM read, sorry, process VM write actually, because we want to write something into the target process address space. We'll have to allocate memory, so process VM operation is required for that. And we're also going to create a thread there. So we need to have a process create thread here as an access mask. So we have to specify that at the very least to have a chance of that succeeding. Then the inheritance uh, handle here doesn't really matter, and the process ID is something we got from the command line. If that fails, for whatever reason, we'll get uh, a null here, and we can just go ahead and, and show the error. So error opening process. And we can display whatever get last error has to say. So this could be failing for a number of reasons, one of them just being the process ID uh, as garbage, so nothing that really represents a process, but it could be a different problem such as access denied. If we're talking, for example, uh, trying to access a protected process that will not work, you can't get that invasive access into protected processes. So assuming everything is fine, we got the handle, we can move forward by allocating memory. So let's allocate memory by using the virtual alloc API, virtual alloc EX, in fact, to allocate memory into a different process than our own process. That's the H process here. This is where process Vim operation is actually required. We don't care what the address ends up being. The size is going to be the size of the path of the DLL, but really we can go ahead with four kilobytes as a single page because it will allocate a single page anyway. So there's no point here in calculating exactly the size of the DLL path. The allocation type should be commit and reserve. So I'm going to reserve a chunk and commit it immediately. That's the right thing to do. And the page protection should be read-write. Otherwise, we won't be able to write and load library wouldn't be able to read. And of course, again, we have to make sure this works. If this fails for some reason, then we're out of memory. But here, I'm just going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to add and include for assert. I'm going to use assert here and run this in debug build. So let's just add an assert that p is not now. Next thing to do is to write the path to that location. And for that, we're going to use the write process memory API. Write process memory allows us to write memory, write information to another process address space, assuming we have a powerful enough handle, which in this case we do, because I've asked for process VM write earlier. The address is P, this is where you want to write that information, and the actual buffer is whatever argv2 is providing to us, which is the path to the DLL, an ASCII path to DLL, in fact, to be more precise, and the size is going to be string length of argv2. We can copy another byte, but it doesn't really matter because the memory is zeroed out anyway when you use the virtual alloc or virtual alloc EX APIs. So we have the size, and then we're going to get back number of bytes actually written, which we don't really care about. So let's just go ahead and assume that this is going to work out fine, even though we could uh, check the return value here. And now we're finally ready to use the create remote thread API. So here's our thread. Let's call create remote thread. This is a function that allows us to create a thread into a different process than our own. And again, we have H process here. And I've been careful to ask for the process create thread access mask. So this is something that can work. Now we have some security attributes which we don't care about. The stack size, we're going to use zero as the default. Uh, this just sets up the, the default stack size for the thread, which we don't really need to tweak. And then we have the start address, which is the most important piece. This is where we need to go and locate where load library exists. And the thing to note here is that load library is going to be running in the other process, but it is loaded into the same location as it is in our process, being part of kernel32.dll. That's because all these subsystem DLLs are mapped to the same virtual addresses in all processes that use them. So we're going to use get module handle here to get the module handle for kernel32. 
kernel 32 dot dll this is where this function is defined and the function is called load library a so we have to be careful here because we're talking about an ASCII version for load library because we expect the path to be ASCII we could have used Unicode, used the W function but for that we had to, we would have to change the main to a W main and expect to get a Unicode string there so I'm going to use A because it is slightly uh, simpler and then of course we have to cast that to LP thread uh, start something, the start routine just to make the compiler happy so we have that, let's just uh, put that on a different line to make it uh, slightly better visible and then we can provide the parameter which is in fact the pointer P that is where the DLL path is stored and then we have some flags which we don't really care about and we can get back the thread ID which we don't need so this is supposed to work and again we can use assert here just to make sure and at this point in fact we're done one thing we can do is wait for the thread to uh, to complete before we even uh, free the memory. You can free that memory or, or just simply make that memory still be there um, regardless. Uh, so we're just going to be wasting 4 kilobytes in the target process, not too bad, but you can definitely add that by calling wait for single object on the handle to the thread and then uh, use virtual free to free that memory or virtual free EX. So I'll leave that as an exercise to you and just to be nice I'm going to close the handles here to the thread and the process and essentially we're, we're done. Okay, so let's try it out, let's see if it actually works. So first let me run notepad here, I'm going to be playing our guinea pig for this demonstration let's go ahead and right click and open a command line so here's our command line uh, let's go to x64 debug and this is where we find our injector and also the DLL so we can see that it requires the uh, process ID here so we'll, we'll provide that uh, as, as we can see here in task manager let's look at uh, notepad see what the process ID is so that's 58448, very nice number. So we have uh, 58448 and the path through the DLL. We have to provide a full path because there's no way to tell in the other process whether we have the current directory pointing to the right location. Most likely not. So x64 debug and we have simple DLL here. And here's Notepad just to show that it is here, being its Notepad itself. Let's give it a shot. And you can see it appears here that says a law from process 58448, which is the right process ID. If you open Process Explorer, look for Notepad, uh, we'll note that our DLL has been injected if all goes well. So here's simple.dll, it is coming from the path we provided. In fact, we can try this again and see that it actually appears uh, automatically uh, when, when the injection actually happens. Let me just clear that up. Let me kill this notepad. Let's create another one as a final test uh, for this uh, example. So here's another notepad. Let's find in Process Explorer here. Um, it's going to show up as green momentarily. Here's notepad. I'm going to sort the names here. So here's S. Simple.dll is definitely not here. So now let's see if that changes once we perform the operation here. Now the process ID is different. It's uh, 27980. So let's just change that to 7980 and here goes, watch what uh, is happening in Process Explorer. And so you'll notice that simple DLL has indeed been created and the message box has appeared on my other screen. So that's it, this is how to inject DLL into a target process using create remote thread.